This is the first of three modules where we're going to derive something called augmented proportional navigation. It's different from proportional navigation we derived in section one because here we're accounting for cases where the target can actually accelerate as a maneuver to make the intercept more difficult. To develop our problem statement, let's consider our pursuer moving with some velocity VP, our target moving VT, but now the target can accelerate. It accelerates with some AT magnitude. That's constant acceleration. It's perpendicular to the target velocity vector. That means that the target velocity does not increase, it does not decrease. The target, through the action of AT, essentially goes along a circular path. And so the pursuer has to intercept this maneuvering target. It has an acceleration it can achieve to do that. AP, and then to define the engagement now, some angles, lead angle, flight path angle, line of sight angle, that's an important one, target heading angle, relative position of the target with respect to the pursuer. And as before, in section one, we assume that all these angles were small, we're working with a linearized engagement, so we're roughly in a head-on scenario. Our pursuer acceleration is assumed to be perfect. That means that when the guidance law, whatever we derive, when it's commanding an acceleration, that pursuer instantaneously achieves that command. So really, the only difference between what we had before and what we have now is this acceleration term. Before we ignored it, now we have it. So we're gonna derive our kinematics to contain that acceleration. So let's go back to those kinematics. There's Z, relative position. Two derivatives means pursuer or target acceleration minus pursuer acceleration. So now we're gonna let Z1 equal Z, Z2 equal Z dot. We're gonna break this up into a set of first order differential equations. This is all the same as last time, but now we're keeping that AP term. In fact, we're going to define a new state variable Z3, and we're going to call Z3 AT, so that Z3 dot is just zero. AT is constant. So let's take these kinematic equations and let's put them in matrix form. So there's our state, Z1, Z2, Z3, and now we're just putting elements in the matrices to uh, create those Z1, Z2, Z3 dot equations that we just saw. And notice that it's just a bunch of zeros for Z3 dot. So we have our linear time invariant kinematics. So we can use these kinematics in an optimal control problem statement just as we had before. We want to find the control over some finite time interval that minimizes this cost function. It has a terminal cost, it has a control effort cost. We're subject to the linear time invariant kinematic equations and our terminal cost matrix QF have positive penalties on the diagonal that correspond to Z1 and Z2. So that's penalizing the distance at TF or penalizing the difference between velocities at the final time. I say TF, it's also capital T, time to intercept. So again, terminal component, control effort component, they battle each other. They shouldn't both be simultaneously small. There's a balance. More control effort means the terminal cost is small. Less control effort means the terminal cost is large. And this is what the optimization is giving us. It's that optimal balance in order to minimize J given how we select the penalties B and C. So along the diagonal also zero, zero penalty on AT. We do not penalize target acceleration. Why? Right, because we can't control acceleration. Think back to that matrix of ODEs. Z3 is not controllable. So we're going to go on a journey next time. We're going to analytically solve this engagement case for an accelerating target. 
and we're going to be using the finite horizon linear quadratic regulator problem structure to do it. Now recall this problem structure, the control that minimizes the cost function, terminal cost, state penalty, control cost. We happen not to have that state penalty here. Subject to the LTI system. We know the solution already from the theory. It's to control U star. It's defined from T naught to the final time. It depends on the control penalty matrix R, the control input matrix of the LTI system B, and the matrix P, remember what that was. Right, the solution to a differential algebraic Riccati equation. We have to somehow solve this Riccati equation. And you're going to see a new technique to solve this in the next module. Finally, note that this is a state feedback guidance law. It depends on the state x. And x has what in it? It has z1, has z2. That's the same as before. But crucially now, we have z3. z3 is the target acceleration. We're feeding back target acceleration in our guidance law. We can already say that without actually even solving the problem based on how we set up our kinematics because we're deriving a state feedback law and the kinematic state has Z3 in it. So some interesting implications then for the guidance law because it requires us to know what the target acceleration is in order to optimally implement the guidance. We'll talk about more details next time. This is Guidance from Optimal Control, Section 2, Module 1.